How's it going guys? We're going to look at example 4.3 in this video. Remember we're in chapter 4 on force system resultants and we are looking at moment of a force vector formulation. Just a quick recap, why would we want to use the vector formulation? Can you answer that question? Well, it is because we are in three-dimensional space. If we're in two-dimensional space, we can use moment of a force scalar formulation. But be whenever we move into three-dimensional space, I hope you've got it by now, it is so much easier and, and, and perhaps only possible for us to solve these problems using vector formulation. So you need to have looked at the previous video or actually attended class, hopefully, or read the textbook. That is a quite a novel idea, reading your textbook. But I highly recommend it. Um, reading your textbook is uh, it's suggested. Um, okay, I have a bit of cynicism. Anyway, here we go. Example 4.3. We have this situation here. We have this tree. Okay. It's got no leaves on. Poor, poor tree. Okay. There's a point A here. And it looks like this guy is trying to pull this tree down. Okay. This farmer and he's on a tractor and he is trying to pull this tree down he's got a rope attached to the tractor and attached to the tree at point A so as this tractor is moving in this direction it is causing a force a tension to be developed in this rope and a force to be applied at, at some kind of angle here um, at, and the, the force is being applied at point A okay so the question is Determine the moment produced by the force F in figure 414A about point O. Okay? So determine the moment caused by this force F about point O. Okay, is that clear? So we have a three-dimensional problem here, X, Y, Z. And we've got a force, we've got a, we've got a point O. And we need to determine what is the moment caused by this force. Okay, so because we're in three-dimensional space, we need to we need to make use of we need to say M O is equal to position vector R cross F. Okay, so remember that in three in two-dimensional space we would have F D. D is our moment arm. It is the distance, right? Again, if we've got our force there, got point O, D would be the distance from the point, perpendicular distance from the point to the, to the line of action. Okay? So that's in two-dimensional space. That's what my D is. It's my perpendicular distance from point O to the line of action of F. However, when we're doing the vector formulation, R is a position vector, number one, and it is, remember this, please, remember this, I'm begging you. From O, R is what? It's a position vector. From O to any point along the line of action of the force F. From O, remember this is in a, a three-dimensional problem. From O to any point, any point. Okay, I've said it now quite a few times. Any point. When I say any point, we mean any point. Along the line of action of F. Okay? So let's have a look now. So we're trying to calculate that the moment is... We need a position vector R and we need a position and we need our, our f we need both of them in Cartesian vector form. So before we get to R, let's just quickly have a look at F. Um, actually no. Let's the textbook first looks at R. Okay? So if you have here's the drawing. There's my Y, there's my X, and my Z, and the tree is is up there. Okay, there's its branches, and we've got point A, 
is point A there. And A, the height is 12 meters. Okay, so, so the coordinates of A are what? It's going to be 0, 0, 12, right? That's the coordinates of A, and that's meters. So 0 in the X, 0 in the Y, but 12 in, the, in A. Okay, so there's a point A. And then what we see, what we see here as well, is we have another, <clears throat> another point that we know of, which is where the tractor is. And this has a, an X component of 4, and a Y component of 12, and a Z component of 0. Okay? So there's a point here in the XY plane. That is 4 meters, and that is 12 meters. Okay? Now remember what I said was... We, we've got so we've got this force coming down here like this okay there's our force F and it says it's equal to 2 kilonewton and there's our point O what is the moment caused by this force about point O so now the first step is we want to find our position vector which is R it is from point O to any point along the line of action of F and here's the line of action of F. And what you can see is we've got two points, A and B, that are along the line of action of F. So, if I choose R, O, A, from O to A, can you see that, what is a position vector again? It just simply tells me how do I get from that first point to the second point, right, in meters. I go 0 in the X, 0 in the Y, and I go 12 in the K. Right? That's my ROA. And what is ROB? ROB. How far how how do I travel to get from O to B? I go four in the X and I go twelve in the Y direction and I go zero. Okay? So I'm gonna just repeat this again. My position vector is any vector from point O to any point along the line of action of, of F. So, based on, on what we've said here, either of these two vectors, position vectors, will work. Either of them will give us the correct answer. We can use that one or that one. Which one would you prefer to use? Well, possibly that one, right? Because there's just less calculations. There's more zeros, which then allows us to have a quicker calculation. So then the next thing is, F is 2 kilonewton. My question to you is, is this F in the correct form? No, it is not. It, this is, all we have now is the magnitude of F. We need to convert this into Cartesian vector form. How do we do that? Well, we say Cartesian vector F is equal to the magnitude of F times the unit vector from A to B. Remember that? And what is the unit vector AB? It is equal to the position vector AB, right, which we calculated there, divided by the magnitude of AB. Okay, and I'm, you've done this quite a lot, so I'm not going to do the whole calculation. Um, yeah, you can go and do this calculation, but F, F now, in vector form, then gives us 0,4588 i plus 1,376 j minus 1,376 k and that is kilonewton all right so remember we have to convert this force into cartesian vector form by multiplying it by the unit vector ab and we get this all right so now we've got F, and we've got an R. So now we need to go, we need to say, my moment about O is equal to R cross F, which means I go I, J, K, and let's choose this, this one because it's a, it's a simpler vector. 
zero, zero, 012. That's the first, that's my R, the R components. Then my F components are second, which is 0, 0, 4, 5, let's round this off, 9, 1, 3, 7, 6, and minus 1, 3, 7, 6. Okay, let's move this over there. Okay, so uh, let me let me show you this rather. This is what we have here. R A cross F. So we use that first vector that we calculated, and we carry out our determinant, meaning we cross out that first column and the row, and then we say that times that minus that times that. So zero times minus one comma three seven six minus that times that, 12 times that, and that's in the I. And we have a minus there, remember? So we cross out that column, we cross out that row, and we have these four numbers. So it's J, open brackets, that times that, minus that times that. And we get that, plus K, open brackets, so we cross that column out, we cross that row out, and we're left with these four numbers. So it's that times that, which is 0 times 1,376, minus that times that. And we end up with this answer here, minus 16,5i plus 5,51j. Now what you notice here is if I used this other vector, this other position vector, and I carried out the cross product, I get exactly the same answer. Okay? So remember that R, the R in the R cross F, is from point O to any point along the line of action of the force. So what we found with two points, A and B, we got a position vector R, ROA and ROB, and they both gave us the correct result, or the, I mean the same result. Okay? They both gave us the same result. Now, I just want us to come again to... So we're getting... We've, we've now gotten this answer, right? MO is equal to minus 16,5I plus 5,5J Newton meter. Again, guys, because this is where it all boils down to. What does this mean? What does this mean? Please try to understand what this means. Well, it's a vector. Remember, R cross F gives us a vector. R cross F, the cross product gives us a vector. Here, we've calculated that vector. What is the magnitude of this moment? The magnitude is 16,5 squared plus 5,5 squared square root which equals what? 16,5 squared is 5,5 squared square root gives me 17,39 kilonewton. That's the magnitude of, of my moment. Okay? That's the magnitude. That's the size. But now, what about the direction? I've, I've really tried to explain this a lot now. Um, here's, a, here's a nice picture in the textbook. That direction, okay, remember this gives you, that moment is minus 16,5 plus 5,5 J. And there, what you notice here, there is that vector. That, that's a vector minus 16,5 in the X, so we go minus 16,5 in the X, I, right? And then plus 5.5 J. And so we get this vector in the XY plane. We stick our thumb in the direction of that vector and we curl our fingers around it like this, right? Like that. So this vector here is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane of F and R and it is also the axis about which this moment is acting. The sense of the sense of rotation about this axis okay so and, and just logically look at it if I'm trying to pull this down and it's rotating about there 
can you see that it does want to rot it want wants to rotate like this? So put your thumb in the direction of this resultant vector. So you go 16,5 16, and then minus x. You go 5.5 .5 positive um, y. And you draw the vector from O in that direction. You, your thumb is then in that direction, and this gives you the center rotation. Okay? So hopefully that was helpful. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Thank you.